Hey guys, Callum here from 3D Tomorrow. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a little photo studio box like this for less than a price of a cup of coffee, 99p. For this project, I jumped straight into the CAD, into Fusion 360, and put together this little light box. I've uh, modelled the parts as different components and then imported them together to see how the finished product should look. Uh, as you can see, it's made up of four sheets of A4 paper, that's one at the left, right, top and back, and then also a sloping A3 piece of paper through the middle. The goal for this project was to keep all the parts printable without supports and also make them as light as possible so that they're nice and cheap and hits my £1 budget for this project. Here's the render, let's hope the print comes out as well as that. When I took the print off the bed, I realised that uh, the print had over extruded slightly. Uh, I do need to get round to calibrating this machine and perhaps I will do a video on printer calibration shortly. Due to the nature of the design, where there are two sides parallel with a 0.5mm gap, the over extrusion did mean that uh, when the head was moving from one side to the next, it completely fused the end of these two sides together. And that is what I'm doing here, cleaning this bit up and chopping through so that the paper can indeed still slot into place. Because the part itself is very thin, only 0.5mm of plastic, I did chop through it in a couple of places, but it's very much a prototype design so that didn't matter too much. Uh, I would definitely recommend printing this part without over extrusion since these parts are designed to be printed without uh, any post-processing. So as I mentioned earlier, you're going to need four sheets of A4 paper and a piece of A3 paper. I'm using 160 GSM card for this because it's thicker so it provides more stability. Each side panel takes two of the full corner pieces at the short end and then on the opposite side it takes one of the open ended corner pieces. I recommend gluing these pieces together so that you don't have to do this part of the assembly every time. And if you do decide to glue the edges to the paper as I have shown, then you can arrange the parts when not in use to be a little paper storage tray which is always quite handy on your side paper in. Pretty cool. Right, so that's the two side panels done. Uh, you might as well flick them round. Bam, bam. And add in the back piece. I decided to swap the back piece out for some 80 GSM paper in the hope that this might let in a little bit more light but I found that it didn't really make a massive amount of difference so I would opt for as thick as possible just to give you that extra stability. So that's that. We can then take the A3 piece. I'm not sure how thick this is, it's just some I had lying around. Maybe 90 gram. And by gram, I mean GSM, so grams per square meter. The last step is to add the two right angle prints onto the final sheet of paper. And we put it on. So there we have it. There is our very cheaply made product photo box, which I think is going to work quite nicely. I'm going to now do a range of lighting setups, ranging from the absolute basic that you will have lying around your house to ones a little bit more uh, advanced. And I will also do some variation in cameras. So I'll use some phone cameras and I'll also use a DSLR to show the, the quality of photos that you can get from a little makeshift box like this. Right, let's go. The first arrangement was as per this render. 
And here are the photos taken from a DSLR. The first has no post-processing, the second has one-click fix, and the third has one-click fix and also white balance adjustment. These ones were shot with a iPhone 7 Plus. They're not too bad, not as good. Uh, this one had some post-processing afterwards. The second setup, this one here facing the light, produced results that had less noise and this was particularly noticeable on the smartphone photos. This single light source does of course incur a shadow but potentially this could be used to nice effect in some cases. For setup 3, I opened up the studio box and used the light from the room and also an additional desk lamp to counteract the shadow. For the final setup, I switched on my diffuse lights and took these final two photos. So there you have it guys, thank you for watching. I've shown you how you can make this product photo box for less than a pound. Uh, I hope you did enjoy the video and if you did, please do subscribe. I will be putting the files for this uh, up on Thingiverse, maybe my manufacturing, and I will be sharing the links to these in the description below. I am going to make a few little tweaks just to improve it ever so slightly, um, but it is meant to be very much prototype style. Uh, test the water to see whether this sort of photography is uh, the way that you like to go. Uh, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, please like, and I will see you next time. Cheers.